Hey everyone and welcome back to another Tuesday tip where in this video we're going to be talking about a recent update to the quick app from GoPro. So a few days ago I was in the app store updating some apps when I noticed that there was an update there for the GoPro video editing app called Quick and I thought that this would make a perfect opportunity to make a follow-up video to my overview video of this app and I thought that I could go through the changes and see if they changed my outlook on the app at all or if they make it any better to use compared to Splice, the editing app that I'm currently using and have used for a very long time. So when you're looking at the update screen, we've got a lot of different things here. We've got new trim modes. It says, enjoy a redesigned video trimming interface and try the new smart trim modes. And this was something that intrigued me because one of the fallbacks to the quick app is that it's a little bit obscure on how you trim videos and it's a little bit harder to do than in splice so I thought that I could give this a chance then we've got action looks for jumps and speed travel looks for panoramic shots people looks for voice and faces then it says you can also let quick do its magic with balanced use highlights only or just trim manually then we've got new adjust photos plus videos pan and zoom adjust horizon then rotate and flip and these were the things that sealed the deal for me because in splice you cannot rotate or flip clips all you can do is pan and zoom which you can do with a ken burns motion effect if you want to see how to do that there is a overview video that i did for splice which i will have as an info card right here but this was the thing that really made me want to check this update out and maybe see if it was easier to use than splice then we've got a better section which says improved color rendering improved voices wind and underwater detection plus with GoPro plus your shared videos will now be saved as shared links in your plus account and then enjoy 17 new songs so I'm assuming that all of these things other than maybe the color rendering section have to do with GoPros themselves Either way though, let's get this app updated, launch it, and show you guys the new updates. Okay, so it's finished updating, and just like my overview video, I'm not going to practice with these things. I'm gonna jump right into it, try them out, and see how they work, because this app is supposed to be extremely user-friendly and fast so that anyone can do it. And we're immediately greeted with a welcome screen that says trim plus crop plus rotate your videos. Watch the video below for more surprises. I'm just going to push got it. We're going to jump right into it. And the first thing that I want to check is something from my overview video in the first place in that we couldn't import 4K videos into Quick. So I know that this is a 4K file and just like last time, it says Quick can't work its magic. Your phone doesn't support the high performance settings used in this video. Quick might crash. Next time, lower the resolution and frame rate for easier processing. Got it. So this means that this app is still not going to work for any 4K video. And this was something that I was also interested in. Immediately, I can say that I'm not going to be switching to this app because I shoot everything in 4K 60 frames per second. And Splice does work for that. So I'm going to continue using Splice but this video still needs to go on because there are updates to talk about which you might be interested in and not everybody shoots in 4k on their phone and if you do want the complete overview you can click the info card up here on the top right of the screen because this video is only going to be covering the updates that came to the quick app in this recent update with that being said i've got a couple files here that are not 4k that i can choose to add into the project. So we can click on both of those and then we're gonna click add. They came in here pretty quickly. Let's pause it so we don't have that music. We've got all of our presets here, but that's not what we're concerned with. I'm just going to go through and pick one. Pause it again because as you guys remember, if you watched the previous video, it auto plays every single time you do something. Now we're gonna go into the third icon from the left here to get to our clips. We're gonna click the first one, we're gonna click it again, and now we see all of our different editing options. 
I wanna check out the new trimming option, so let's click Trim. And underneath these options, it actually gives us a little description of what it does. Here it says for the balanced option, Quick picks the best clips from your video within your selected range. Then the manual option says, trim your video, it will play without cuts. Obviously it's manual. Then the action setting says, quick looks for jumps or top speed in your video. It also says at the top that it needs GoPro video. It says quick needs footage from a GoPro to find jumps or top speed in your video, hero five and up. The travel option says, quick looks for panoramic shots slow pans in parentheses and people in your video and at the top it also says needs gopro video and it says quick needs footage from a gopro to find panoramic shots hero five and up and people hero six in your video then the people option at the bottom says quick looks for people and in parentheses it says faces comma voice in your video at the top it says again needs gopro video Quick needs footage from a GoPro to detect voice and faces in your video. And in parentheses, again, it says Hero 6. Then Highlight Only Mode says Quick Only Plays Existing Highlights. Go to Highlight Panel to create key moments. And at the top, it says Missing Data. Quick Needs Highlights in Your Video. And then it gives you a Try Balanced Mode option. Okay, so now we're gonna go over to the highlights option to make some highlights. And from what I've gathered, the highlights only trimming action is basically taking your multiple highlights that you select in the video and cutting out everything else. So let's go into here, select a few highlights, and then go back to the trimming section. So we're gonna click highlight. We're gonna highlight the beginning. And then we're going to select another highlight here and a highlight here. Now we're gonna push OK, go back over to Trim. We're gonna slide all the way over to Highlight Only, and then we're gonna push Play and see what happens. Start to the beginning, played our highlight, skip to the next one, and then skip to the last one. So that's how the highlight trimming option works. Obviously we can't try out the other options. So let's go back to Manual, push OK, and let's go over to the adjust option here and see what that gives us. So we've got a rotate button, a flip button, another flip button. I'm assuming the first one is a flip horizontally button and the second is a flip vertically button. Then we've got a reset button. So let's see what happens when we slide over on this little bar here. Looks like it's adjusting the horizon and automatically scaling it in so that you don't have any black space. Let's exit that, do a reset, because it's zooming in every single time. If you notice there, every single time we do that, it zooms in a little bit more. So we want to reset from the beginning. I don't think we need to adjust the horizon, but it's there. Now let's rotate. And this looks like it does the rotate 90 degrees at a time. Let's see if the touch screens have any options here. Using two fingers, we can pinch to zoom. Can we rotate? No, we cannot rotate with two fingers pinching and turning, but we can zoom and we can place the video with one finger. So this is a nice feature. Now let's try flipping horizontally. We got a mirror image here. Let's reset so we can get zoomed all the way back out. That's what it looked like backwards and Flipping it vertically shows us what it would look like upside down and backwards. Let's go OK. And I believe that these are the only options within here that we wanted to check out. It looks like they're very intuitive and easy to use. Unfortunately, we can't use them in 4K. That's okay for some people though, just not me. And as I said earlier, there were new music options added, which you can check out. I'm not gonna go through and play all of the music. There's 17 new songs added in here for you to check out and use with your videos. Okay, so that just about wraps up all of the changes and new additions to the GoPro Quick app that have come with this new update that's in the App Store right now. And if I had to make an updated judgment from my previous overview video based on the improvements, changes, and additions 
to this app from this update, I would say that it's obviously still not for anyone who shoots in 4K all of the time, but when it comes to anyone who doesn't shoot 4K, this app just became a very great choice and has just received a tremendous update, which gives it features that are above and beyond the capabilities of other video editing apps currently. I don't know of any other video editing apps that allow you to adjust the horizon while flipping and rotating the video at the same time or even at all for that matter. Within iMovie, all you can do is zoom in and zoom out. You can't even move the clip around. Within Splice, you can move the clip around and zoom in and out, but you cannot rotate it or adjust the horizon. So now the GoPro Quick app not only allows you to not have to edit your videos by trying to edit them for you, it also now adds functionality that other video editing apps just don't give you, while at the same time, it's added in controls that allows you to completely and manually edit a video the way that you can in these other video editing apps, which was my only and main gripe with the app before. Aside from not being able to import 4K, it didn't easily give you the option to manually edit a video without any of the automatic features that the Quick app is most known for. So now this app is the entire package where you can do anything and everything that you can imagine with a video. And if they add the option for importing 4K in the future, this is definitely an app I can see myself switching to. And as of right now, I can recommend this app to anyone editing video that isn't shot in 4K. And that's not something that I could say before in my previous video. And like I said before, I do have an overview of the entire app and all of its functionality, minus the new additions and changes from this update, which I will link in the description below, as well as a video card and the end screen of this video. So with that being said, I'd just like to reiterate that I can now recommend this app to anyone who needs to edit a video and doesn't shoot in 4K and GoPro so if you're listening, add the 4K option and you will get a lot more users on this app, including myself. So thank you guys for watching. I come out with tips and tricks videos like this one, but BMX related every Tuesday that I have something to talk about, as well as a BMX news video on Fridays and other types of riding videos throughout the week. Thank you again for watching and we'll see you next time. Goodbye.